In this video, I'll be painting Captain America from Marvel Crisis Protocol and using this model as a method of practicing my layering techniques, my highlighting, and experimenting a little bit with metallics. So I got into painting miniatures in September of last year, and this has been a incredibly fun and rewarding hobby. And so since I've really, really dived into the deep end now of painting these miniatures, I wanted to start making these YouTube videos as a way of documenting my progress and growth as a painter. So for each of these series of painting videos that I'll be making, I will be addressing certain goals that I try to set out for myself and to see how well I achieve those goals going forward. I will be breaking down my painting process and hopefully as I learn and grow as a painter, maybe I'll be able to share some techniques or if you are not currently a painter, I hope that these videos will encourage you to maybe pick up a brush yourself and start painting as well. So one of the things that I want to really practice with this Captain America model is I want to start practicing improving my layered highlights. So that's goal number one, practice highlighting and using layers to build up those highlights and contrast on the miniature. My second goal, I want to paint the shield more similar to how it looks in the MCU movies, where instead of the white ring, on the shield, it's a, it is that metallic brushed silver. There is a metallic sheen to the blue and the red on the shield as well. I wanna try to play around with true metallic metals, figure out how to get that sort of red metallic and blue metallic. Now that I've outlined these goals, let's go ahead and jump in and start the actual painting process. Okay, so to begin the painting process, I first need to prime the model, and to do this, I'm going to be using Vallejo Surface Primer Black and Vallejo Surface Primer Gray to create a zenithal highlight. I'll begin by using an airbrush. Now, I'm using an airbrush, but you can use a spray can just as easy to be able to do this as well. You don't need an airbrush. I use it for convenience, and because I have one. So why not use it, right? <laughs> So to do a zenithal highlight, take your airbrush or your paint can and begin by priming the entire model in black. Secondly, you will then take your paint can or airbrush and loading that up with a corresponding gray or white. Um, I use the Vallejo Surface Primer Gray, which goes on actually quite as more of an off-white than it does more of a gray. I'll take my airbrush and then begin to spray the model from the di direction of where the light source would be coming from. Now, I don't coat the entire model in this gray, just enough to create some, hopefully, some natural shadows. Next up, I'm gonna start base coating Captain America. I'll start off base coating with Army Painter's Deep Blue. Following that up, for the boots, the gloves, and the red stripes, I'll paint an Army Painter Vampire Red. I'll paint the belt, pouches, and straps with Army Painter's Dirt Splatter. For the buckles, belt clips, star on his chest, the A and wings on his helmet, I'll paint with Vallejo Model Air Steel to match a little bit more similarly with his look in the Marvel movies. For his skin tone, I'll start with scar tissue and then I'll eventually go over and with a light glaze, use Army Painter's Elven Flesh to bring out a little bit more of those flesh tones. I wanted the knee pads on this model to kind of stand out a little bit more from the rest of the blue, so I used Army Painter's Dark Sky to give them their own identity. Also for the Avengers A emblem, there's a little bit of red mixed in there as well, so I use Army Painter Vampire Red for this as well. For the white stripes, and for the Avengers A on his shoulder, I will use Army Painter's Gorgon Hide. For 
For the shield, I wanted it to have a lot more of a metallic look, more similar to the way that it looks like in the MCU movies as opposed to the comics. So for this, I painted the shield using a Vallejo Model Air steel all over it. And what I attempted to do was to take Army Painter Vampire Red and creating a very light glaze with that, I wanted to glaze over the red rings on the shield, as well as taking Army Painter's Deep Blue for the interior part of the shield, the blue ring around the center, I wanted to also glaze around that as well. I wanted to experiment with this because that could open a lot of doors for other possibilities in the future for painting, and I just really, really wanted to try this. It didn't quite work out exactly how I had hoped because once I started putting down the glaze, the, the silver tone started mixing in with the red and it, it kind of created a little bit more of a pink <laughs> ring. And so what I then tried to do is I tried to, on a, pal on a separate palette, try to mix in some of the Vallejo Model Air with some of that Vampire Red, which didn't really produce a very convincing result. Uh, I painted a ring around that, but then I eventually just went in and painted a solid layer of vampire red around the rings. And the same thing ended up happening with the deep blue. It didn't quite work out. So I need to go back to the drawing board a little bit, maybe talk to some other painters. Maybe you guys might have some ideas and insights on how to achieve this kind of effect that I was kind of looking for. Might be worth looking into painting with inks for something like this. I don't know. If you have any ideas or if you have any insight on a pr better way of doing this, hey, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to chat with you about it because, hey, I'm new, I'm learning. And hey, experimenting and messing up and stuff like that, you learn a lot by doing that and experimenting is part of the fun of this hobby anyway, so yeah. Next on to the highlighting. So for the highlights, I use a mixture of deep blue and gorgon hide to slowly build up the layers of highlights on the blue parts of the suit. Gorgon hide is great because it has a little bit of a, it is a white, but it has a little bit of a blue tone mixed into it. So it's, gr it's great to be able to use pure gorgon hide for those absolutely highest, highest, highest highlights. I use Army Painter Pure Red to add layered highlights onto the red parts of his suit, such as the boots and the gloves, as well as the parts of the red stripe where the mo more of the light is hitting it. I'll gently add a little bit of matte white to the white stripes and whiter areas of his suit to highlight with a bit more white. For the brown areas on his suit, such as the leather straps that he has, uh, I will use Army Painter's Leather Brown to work up highlights for that. This was the next part that I, I need to practice and I need to, needed to learn how to do. So let's see, oh gosh, I was really nervous to do this because this was one of the first models that I've really attempted to try blending up highlights. Uh, it was a little nerve wracking to try to do it, but I went in and it ended up turning out okay, I think. Yeah, it definitely looks like there's definitely a lot of room. Uh, for improvement, but it was really great to finally get my hands dirty, practicing these layer up, these layering, these highlights. And I finally kind of, I was able to kind of get my head around a little bit how this kind of method works. And I'm really looking forward now to practicing it on other future models. Very quickly, I'm going to do a shade. And for that shade, I'm going to take Army Painter's Blue Tone and over the areas of his suit that is blue, I'm just going to paint in lightly using that blue tone to emphasize more of those shadows in the recessed areas and add a little bit of nice contrast to it. And now to do a bit of detailing. For the details, I make sure to go around the model and clean up the sections that may need some sharpening. I also take a matte black and black line the areas of separation, such as where the boots begin, the gloves, the leather straps, and carefully line out the grooves in the shield. Again, this is why this hobby is so forgiving and so accepting of new painters is because don't be afraid to be a bit messy with it. Just go in, make sure you just play around with it, do what you want to, and then you can go in and clean it up and sharpen it out and fix some of those paint spillovers later. So don't be afraid of getting paint where you didn't necessarily want it because you can fix it. And now to do the base. 
So for Captain America's base, I painted the base using Army Painter's Dark Stone. I painted the raised sidewalk area with Army Painter's Uniform Gray. Then once those are dry, I went in with a dry brush and added a layer of Army Painter's Dungeon Gray. Using Citadel Nuln Oil, I then add a little bit of shade to the recessed areas. Once the shade is dry, I'll add one more very light layer of Dungeon Gray using the dry brush, and then I'll paint the storm drain using Field Gray and the holes with matte black. So with that, I think I'm happy to call this model done. So the goals that I had set out for myself was to practice layering and to practice, well, to experiment with the metallics on the shield. So did I achieve my goals? Well, yes and no. I'm gonna say no, I didn't achieve, I didn't achieve what I set out to do for the shield, but that's okay. We learned that, okay, cool, that's not going to work. For the layered highlights, I, I think I did mostly achieve what I sort of set out to do, which didn't really have a hard set goal for that one. It was just to, okay, cool, let's go and practice this. And I'm gonna say that I, did, I felt really good going in and finally getting my hands dirty with it. And I think that's the most important part right there is get a feel for how layering up your colors and layering up and down two different colors and mixing it on the palette works. So yeah, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna chalk that up to a success on that one. Um, now, the layers mm, leave a lot to be desired, still a lot to kind of work on, but is, I feel like this is a really comfortable and really, really good starting point to be able to go on to the next model and try to increase the quality of those layers. So what do you think? How did you paint your Captain America? Leave your, leave your review, feedback, and questions down in the comments and we can chat about it. It'd be fun. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.